Over the years, Jamaica has been a good backdrop for several Hollywood films, from James Bond flicks to more modern day blockbusters. When Hollywood came, others followed, resulting in many small budget independently produced films also being shot on local soil. So when two Canadian writers with Jamaican connections decided to make a film about Jamaica, they expected to shoot it here. But that was easier said than done. After being frustrated by uncooperative local authorities for years, the filmmakers were forced to take the project elsewhere. I was extremely disappointed. It was about four years where we um, tried to figure out a way to film the movie in Jamaica. And to be honest, for most of that time, it didn't occur to me that we wouldn't shoot in Jamaica. It just seemed like, you know, we just had to figure it out. It seemed like with some ingenuity it would, we would make it work, that someone would sort of be able to help us, that we'd get some kind of assistance that was needed. That help wasn't forthcoming. Home Again co-writer and director Sud Sutherland argues that independent filmmakers have to shoot where it makes sense. As independent filmmakers in any jurisdiction, we need to have the, the government step in, whether that be tax incentives, whether that be hotel, accommodation, airfare, we need help because every jurisdiction that you film in has to contribute in some way. If Jamaica wants to get into the business in any real way, Jamaica has to formulate some measure of incentive like every other country. The filmmakers say they desperately wanted to shoot the film on local soil and they went as far as making unprofitable concessions, but Jamaican authorities didn't budge. We tried. We went through private means. We went through official means. We, we had friends go to the government on our behalf. We talked to two different um, film commissioners. We went to JAMPRO. We, you know, we tried to talk to the minister. We tried to even, we went to our, on our side, we looked into what would um, it take to have um, a co-production agreement between Jamaica and Canada. We tried to, once, once we realized that that Jamaica wasn't going to be able to um, have a tax incentive. We, we suggested that maybe they could help us with hotel, um, with accommodations, with flights. And that's when Trinidad and Tobago became a viable option for a location to shoot the film. Producer Lisa Wickham says the fact that Trinidad could provide locations which looked similar to Jamaican streets was a plus. She points out that that coupled with a government willing to lend extra support gave the Twin Island Republic the edge. The main thing in this situation would have been the 35% rebate offered by the government of Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, um, the rebate is something that is offered by a number of countries. Uh, Fiji, for example, is making it very competitive to film there with over 40%, 42, I think, percent rebate. Um, even in Toronto, that's one of the attractions of filming in Toronto versus in Hollywood, for example. So that rebate system that is relatively new to Trinidad Tobago was perhaps one of the key factors in attracting um, the, the filmmakers to Trinidad and Tobago. There were other incentives which helped to seal the deal. Some of the other things that exist with regard to Trinidad and Tobago, um, and I'm not sure it's perhaps unique to Trinidad and Tobago, would be the um, the incentives with regard to assisting with the importation of, of film equipment, uh, work permits, and so on, facilitation, uh, the ease with which uh, the equipment can be brought into the country once it's being taken back out at the end of the project, as well as the issuing of work permits for the crew to work uh, during the process. So the entire process, I must say, was, was facilitated by the Trent Tobago Film Company with regard to legal side of things and getting getting equipment into Trinidad to be going to the work permits issued and so on. With over a million Canadian dollars invested in the film, the filmmakers theorize that hundreds of Jamaicans lost out on possible employment opportunities which were generated from the film. We employed over 1,000 extras. We had um, over 80 crew members, you know, and so like from Trinidad. So this is employment that would have gone to Jamaica. And again, we tried for over four years to bring this to Jamaica. And I'm telling you, it broke my heart because I honestly, I never thought 
that I was it would be able for me to actually uh, make this movie anywhere but Jamaica. The filmmakers say they're now working on another project and they're not ruling out Jamaica as a possible location. But several things need to change. Without some kind of assistance for an independent film like ours, um, there was no way we could have shot it in Jamaica. So the government needed to step up and say, hey, we've read your script. Because they did, and they, they were fine with our script. They were fine with our, us as a team. They were fine with what we were going to do, at least as conveyed to us by the film commissioners. But the problem was nobody was willing to step in and say, okay, how can we help these guys in an active way to ensure that this film gets done in Jamaica? Nobody did that. Nobody even actually answered or called. Meanwhile, director of the Jamaica Film Academy, Barbara Blake Hanna, believes that the issues faced by the Canadian filmmakers is a perfect example of the lack of support given to the local film industry from successive governments. The fact that the, that film about um, the deportees had to go to Trinidad is a great indictment of our own industry. That here was an opportunity when we really could have had an indigenous feature film made here and all the stops weren't pulled out to make that happen. That's really a shame. There's only one law here in Greenwich Park. Fight or be killed.